It's wrapped up for the day, fixing to head back in. Figured I'd take you guys along for the ride. There's the helicopter back there. Pretty sweet views out here in West Texas. So, I'll let you fly back in with me and then uh, maybe talk about how I got into doing some flying. So, here we go. Walk you guys through a start. Three lights, they all work. Switches are on the right spot. Circuit breakers are in. Heat's off, throttle's closed. Right at 127, so we're below 150. So we can introduce the fuel as soon as we get to 12%. Passing 10, there's 12, blades are turning. There's a good first light off. As soon as the first peak kind of starts dying down, we'll add a little fuel. Trying to maintain between 760 and 820. Oil pressure is good. There's the detent. 58, we're off the starter. TOT is good, oil pressure is good. Answer back to zero. Grab the generator. Lights out. Answer good. It's charging. Get the avionics on. Kind of trimming it with my thumb over to the right. It slowly picks up pretty neutral. There's neutral. Cool. Power's good. Do a little, little dive off this cliff. Sorry, been flying around over here. Beautiful out here. Sometimes we get we get stuck in some uh, pretty pretty flat flat places to work. So it's kind of cool to come out where there's a little bit of terrain, get to play around a little bit. Cruising back, we've got about 70 miles to go back to the airport. Figured I'd maybe do a little video of how I got into flying. It's one of one of many different ways you can go about build your hours and potentially just even stay in right where you're uh, right where you're at. All the guys that kind of went the route that I did, they stay there till they retire and don't really bounce around too much until after. Uh, after they fully retired from that first job. But I grew up in a family that wasn't really involved in aviation, didn't have any close family members that were pilots. Um, as a kid, I was pretty pretty mechanical, like like operating machines and driving motorcycles and any piece of equipment you could kind of get your hands on, I kind of wanted to mess with. Um, didn't, uh, didn't really think much about flying. Took uh, probably some time after high school. I took a flight around New York City, uh, just a tour helicopter with my wife. And she, uh, she's in the back and she's got a picture of me sitting in the front looking at the, uh, at the pilot, just kind of admiring what he's doing. So that, that was probably kind of around the time frame that I decided, you know, maybe should look into this. Are kind of 
seeing what kind of avenues there are to get get to that point. So 2009-ish, uh, starting seeing videos, you know, internet videos starting to kind of get more popular. Watching guys do uh, do cool stuff. Kind of got in, got the bug to kind of start looking in how to fly. Talked to my dad about it a little bit, and it turns out that he also had always had the thought of, you know, learning how, maybe building his own experimental helicopter. We looked pretty extensively into the uh, the kits, like the rotaways and stuff like that. And then eventually we just decided to maybe go do a discovery flight. We found a flight school down in Atlanta that had a uh, couple R-22s and R-44s. Me and my dad both signed up for a uh, discovery flight, and then one twenty-two, and myself and another. And uh, discovery flights is kind of where they take you on a tour, but they kind of let you get the controls, and figure out what does what, confirm what little bit you know or don't know about uh, about flying. So it's a pretty neat way to actually see what it was like, and. Pretty much got the bug after that. Started looking into uh, places to do some training. Exploring the different routes to build hours. And realizing that it was really expensive. So started looking around. And the two pretty much standard ways of getting your flight training paid for are either through the military and through the uh, police department. So at the time, had a pretty young family, got married pretty early, and uh, didn't want to move all over the country. So I started really kind of diving deep into the law enforcement side of things. Found a website, policehelicopterpilot.com. Don't even think it's around anymore, but it kind of laid out how departments go about hiring, you know, police officers or training from within, for the most part. Usually involving some sort of time commitment before they start uh, investing in your flight flight training portion. So, uh, the flight school that I was at actually was right across the field from a uh, police department that flew two 500D models. So that was kind of a uh, another another good motivator seeing those guys fly, EG and then uh, doing training flights, going out on patrol, stuff like that. Um, so started putting in my applications places. Figured being a police officer would be a pretty cool career. And, you know, make better money than, than being at a flight school. Um, and then with the potential opportunity to, you know, jump right into a, a turbine helicopter, doing some pretty cool stuff. So started applying. Ended up getting uh, hired on at Gwinnett County. Went in about the same time I was finishing up my private rating when I got my final job offer. And then they, uh, you know, they hire you pre, they have their own academy, so they hire you pre-academy and they'll put you in different administration portions of the department just to help do, you know, busy work, just to keep you on, uh, keep you on payroll until your academy starts. I was fortunate enough to have some pretty good, uh, pretty good background investigators that, you know, knew I wanted to fly. I was trying to, trying to skirt the, you know, the edge of letting them know that this is what I wanted to do and also, you know, try not to be like, you know, jump into the front of the line like, you know, I want to be, I want to be the next, you know, next pilot or whatever. So, knew I had to do a couple years before anything like that was going to ever come to fruition. But fortunately, they uh, they put me over in aviation pre academy, so I was able to make some make some friends over there. You know, let them know my name, let them see that I was a hard hard worker, dedicated to actually you know, putting the hours in to eventually get into a spot over there full time. So left uh, left there, did the academy, spent four years on patrol as a regular police officer, just trying to make myself available in any free time that I had to go over there and help those guys out. It's a bit smaller of a unit, 
so they didn't have full-time uh, tactical flight officers, which is the police, you know, related mission side of the aircraft. So there was a lot of opportunities to kind of get in the right seat, you know, learn how to run, out, learn how to run all the equipment, get comfortable talking on the radios, and then just see see what you had to do as a pilot. Um, as I went through those four years on patrol, eventually uh, kind of met my first aviation mentor who knew that they were kind of tired of training people once they got to the unit. So they kind of had the idea to start training prior to somebody coming over so they didn't have to invest a whole bunch of time. The person could be a little bit more turnkey. And uh, luckily I had my private rating at that point, so I was able to log, you know, PIC time and actually get some decent hands-on training in a turbine, learning how to start it and all that stuff. And then uh, get my commercial rating before I ever was even, before I was ever even able to fly full time. So that was pretty cool. Lucky enough, a couple months after getting my commercial license, they had an opening, and uh, I was selected to go over there fly full-time for the police department. Pretty small unit, and uh, being pretty proactive, I was able to, you know, fly quite a bit. The first couple years, get to do some pretty neat stuff for somebody that only had, you know, 200 hours. So getting to fly night vision goggles, a lot of night flying, using the infrared camera, a lot of multitasking with the different police radios, different airspace. We were just, just outside of Atlanta. So it was a really good experience. So I spent the next five-ish years flying full-time for them. And as I kind of progressed, I realized I enjoyed the little bit more challenging flying versus just flying circles, waiting for calls to come out. You know, I enjoyed working with our SWAT team, the K-9 guys, doing K-9 deployments, swift water, rescue training. All that stuff, the more, the more hands-on actual flying of the aircraft. And seeing videos online of guys doing power line construction, construction seemed right in my wheelhouse for what I wanted to you know, do as a, a next step in my career. With the uh, pay, pay, and then just some of the, the politics stuff, the police department, I mean, they, they treated me really good, but there was always, you know, I guess the grass is greener on the other side of the fence type thing. Definitely knew I would enjoy the, the hands-on flying a little bit more. So I started putting out applications. Luckily I was flying a, a 500, so I had plenty of turbine time and time in the airframe that most power line operators use. So that was uh, probably my real saving grace is that we were, we were still using 500s and then we got some F models or converted to F models, and I got time, time to that as well. But the biggest thing that I didn't have that a lot of guys all require is uh, external load time, so long line time, vertical reference. And out the door, slinging stuff around. So we didn't do any of that at the department. So networking through Instagram and just talking to people. Met a couple friends online. Uh, one of them, who's now my, my current boss, he was uh, he lived in Georgia as well. Told him he was ever interested in training somebody from the ground up that I'd definitely be interested. And uh, hoping that you know him being in Georgia would would uh, help make that happen. So after talking to him for probably a year, meeting him uh, eventually, Heli Expo, doing some. Uh, keeping up with each other. We realized we had quite a bit of stuff in common. Uh, some of the other guys that, that we worked with became really good friends with them. They decided to give me an opportunity to uh, come on and hopefully start doing some aerial saw work as they got that program built up. So the company I work for now, HLH Aviation, they're a smaller company. We don't have a whole lot of jobs that don't already require you to have experience, whereas some of these other bigger companies do a lot of patrol and inspection, and you can kind of get used to flying in the wire environment doing that, and they can kind of stair-step you up. HLH was 
pretty much all their jobs required you to know what what you were doing prior to them, you know, getting there. So big big leap for them to uh, take the time and uh, you know put in the make the investment to to train me. So I guess showing them that I was you know determined and once they knew that I actually could fly, they were willing to take that risk. So got on with them. Uh, the idea was I was just going to be a groundman until they started having flying jobs and where they could kind of work me in. Um, the aerial assault stuff kind of got put on the back burner because they were so busy with power line. Power line work that I ended up just shadowing uh, another pilot doing power line. Power line jobs. I'd be his groundman in the, yeah, you know, during the day and then in the evenings I would go back to the uh, airport, throw the long line on. He would take the time out of his day to show me how to not swing the load all over the place, which is pretty entertaining when you first learn how to do it. It's like learning, learning how to fly all over again. So I'd do that in the evening, and then uh, during the day I'd, I'd be his groundman, making sure the truck was full of jet fuel, inspecting all the equipment, helping the, uh, the linemen rig up loads, uh, first couple jobs were really great because we worked with a great group of guys that uh, knew that eventually, you know, I may be flying them around. So they took the time to kind of show me the ins and outs of all the different stuff, the parts and pieces and the terminology of, you know, all the stuff they used to build a line. And uh, they allowed me to go up on the long line on the side of the helicopter, you know, see what they're doing from, you know, the... the vantage point of 50 feet away from, you know, if you're working off a long line, seeing what the other end of that looks like when you're trying to trying to fit a, a bolt, you know, in a hole while you're sitting there hovering it up and down. So definitely a good experience. It was pretty cool. Last year I ended up working for that same same general foreman and uh, foreman as their pilot. So that was pretty neat to come back full circle and uh, actually do some do some real work for them, but it was neat as I progressed through and had a lot of jobs like that to where people knew that you kind of got to train up the next uh, the next group of group of pilots, so they were they were willing to let me kind of cut my teeth and you know learn. And obviously, we had another pilot there to whenever I wasn't capable of doing something, he would jump in and keep the customer happy. So I did that for about a year, uh, probably a year and a half. Got on a few few inspection jobs where I was flying by myself, you know, getting to get down in the wire environment, fly with different linemen, do all that fun stuff. Then uh, once I got enough hours to start flying people around on the long line, kind of got worked into doing that. And as soon as that was accomplished, I was able to fly a lot more consistently consistently because I could, you know, actually work the jobs versus just moving material or doing the little stuff, burying back and forth and whatnot. So it's definitely definitely hard to go from being the, the top pilot at a police department to, you know, essentially being a groundman, not even really considering yourself a pilot anymore. But I knew opportunities to get to get that type of experience don't come very often, so it's one of those things you kind of have to pick and choose if you're going to sit someplace else and hope that another thousand hours of doing the same thing is going to help you, you know, another five years down the road to get into another spot So hopefully somebody can train you to do uh, external load work. So it was worth it. Luckily, they started, started you at the same pay that I was making at the police department. So at least the, the pay and benefits even starting out were, was a wash, so it worked out fine. Other than adapting to living on the road. So it's the biggest thing is being away from home versus, you know, having weird shift work, but at least you were, at least you were home. So did that for a year and a half. Year, year and a half, got cut loose on my own. Start building a lot more time, doing more 
the damn stuff. Even now, show up to a job, maybe something you've never done before. So, gotta, gotta make a few phone calls, see how, see how you're supposed to go about doing it. If it's something really complicated and, you know, higher on the risk assessment than uh, another experienced pilot can still come out and shadow you, make sure you know what you're doing, show you how to do it, and then, again, be able to, be able to jump in and take over if uh, we need to keep the customer happy and on schedule. That's pretty much where I'm at now. Built the power lines all over the country, so we get to fly in some pretty, pretty cool spots. Literally out in the middle of nowhere, which is great. After flying, after flying around Washington D.C. and having to make uh, phone calls to the, gosh, what do you have to call? You have to call the TSA, then approach, file some crazy flight plan that they never. They never understand what you're doing. You tell them you got an hour and a half of fuel on board, but really you've got all day for the fuel because you're laying in there pumping gas, but every morning is a, <laughs> a hassle. So it's kind of nice being out here. Nobody, uh, nobody around, but you and your crew, so pretty cool. Make a lot of new friends each time you show up to a job. Could be guys you worked with before, and then other times it's a whole new crew. Some guys that haven't flown, but you put them on there, take it slow, it's the same way that I had to learn. You know, they got to learn how to do this stuff too, so it's, it's neat to, you know, I haven't been doing it that long, but I've seen enough people do certain things to where I have a pretty good idea where I can kind of, you know, you coach, coach some linemen through how to do stuff. And you also get coached by other linemen because they, they've flown with, you know, 20 different pilots. And uh, they make a, make a suggestion, and as long as you're open-minded about, you know, hey, that may, that may work. It may work better. And then you do it, and you're like, oh, shit. I wish I would have been doing this for the last, you know, two years. So that happens, happens quite a bit. Show up to a job. Learn new stuff. Always something. Cool, kind of popping up over these little plateaus. All right, coming up on uh, our airport. Let's get the Aegis. Airplane 
and spooled it. Thanks for riding along. Hopefully, uh, hopefully it helps somebody and I didn't sound like too big of an idiot. Hell yeah.